Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our Celebrate International Animation Day little project where we're focusing on Ralph Bakshi. I'm with my buddy who's been joining me on this uh, retrospective, the Catface Killer. Welcome back, my good old young boy. <laughs> young boy, that's your new name, young boy. <laughs> hey, 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 man. Hey, 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 man. It's all right. I thought we were doing black exploitation, not uh, animation. <laughs> you know what? This could pass for both. So, guys, if you've been following our Ralph Bakshi filmography, you know last time we actually spoke about Heavy Traffic, a revered film for the majority. We were kind of critical on it, not not very... Kinda? <laughs> Kinda? Yeah, well, not, we didn't have the best experience, but again, everyone's experiences will differ. So, you know, I like to call these first three movies, Fritz, Heavy Traffic, the Urban Trilogy, because from this point onwards, after this movie, Ralph Bakshi diversifies a bit more and goes into the world of fantasy and I'm actually looking forward to the end of this particular trilogy and this movie we're going to speak about next next one up is 1975's Coonskin yes Coonskin and for those of you that are super millennials or generation Z you might not even know the term Coon is derogatory towards black people it is and at the time of the movie's release it got a lot of hate not just because of the title but because of the the content of the movie, it was meant to be very disparaging to black people, very stereotypical. Again, all, every single black character you've seen in Ralph Bakshi's previous movies, Fritz the Cat and the Heavy Traffic, you get more of the same here, but then exemplified because they're focusing on the black characters with a black story. But before we get started, let me just say for the record, this movie does not offend me on a racial level. Are you serious? I was afraid of that the whole recording, like look coming into it, I was like, Oh, man, are we gonna be like he's gonna be telling me how he's so offended by this movie? Which no. don't get me wrong, like there's nothing wrong with being offended by this movie. This movie's extremely racist, but I thought that was gonna be the majority of the recording. Yeah, I mean, me saying it didn't offend me doesn't mean the movie's not racist, and doesn't mean that it doesn't perpetuate stereotypes and is bad for other reasons. I just wasn't like I'm not a snowflake. I don't get hurt by these kind of things, and I actually can see what Ralph Bakshi was going for because unlike his other two movies. Well, more like Fritz the Cat, I do feel like there was a narrative here. I can see a story structure, but again, like the other two movies, the execution is fucking bizarre. There's so many choice scenes. Let me tell you something about Bakshi, man. I will never deny he's got some unforgettable moments in these movies with this crazy animation style, which I actually have a... I have more criticism towards the animation style this time than in the other movies, because I like... A lot of the stuff, the psychedelic stuff he does. But in this movie in particular, and I'm, I'm putting off the story for a particular reason, but speaking about the animation, first of all, if you're dealing, dealing with black characters, and a lot of these black characters are animals, like the main three characters, was it a bear, a fox, and a pig? No, a bear, a fox, and a rabbit. And a rabbit, sorry. And they're black. If you're going to draw black characters or dark skin characters... You're going to really try not to have them in a lot of black backgrounds. And a lot of this movie is set in the dark, set in the, the dark streets of, what is it, Chicago? Um, No, Harlem. Harlem, sorry. And uh, the characters are not outlined. You know what I mean? So if they're black in it in the dark and in dark places, I found it hard to differentiate them. It just didn't stand out. And I think it's a very critical mistake to make from an anim- animated standpoint. You know, but that was a big problem for me all throughout the movie. These characters are walking around. I feel the colours were very muted. And to be honest with you, I really enjoy Ralph Bakshi as an animator and a director, mostly for his animation style. Well, I mean, on a personal level, I don't watch a lot of black exploitation movies, and this is what that is. It's a it's a black exploitation movie. Sure. The narrative follows a lot of <laughs> black exploitation storylines where it's like their parents died, they lost their home, they gotta go do something <laughs> about you know, getting on with their lives and they kind of, it's from there on, you know, that's the basic setup of a lot of black exploitation movies. Sure. What do I think of this movie? Like you said, the animation, uh, compared to the other two movies, especially, I was surprised that it dipped. Um, like some of the character designs and stuff looked just fine. I mean, they look more like regular cartoons than anything, Yes, you're right. but then others like extremely quote unquote niggerish yeah. which made me feel very uncomfortable watching and yeah. it's like basically if you took out all the racist aspects to the art style and you just had like a more of a regular looking art style this would be 
probably between watchable and acquired taste. Like for me, it was watchable, but I think in general, more of a acquired taste. You like black exploitation movies, you probably ignore us and enjoy this movie, despite all of its racist overtones and shortcomings. Let's get into the plot so people can understand. If you haven't watched the movie, you might think, why are you guys just starting slagging on the movie? It's describe what the movie's about. And you gave a very brief overview, but let me go over it in a little bit more detail. So again, Ralph Bakshi does this thing which is a bit jarring. He mixes live action with the animated segment. And when the movie starts, and now this is why I don't blame you for calling it a black exploitation movie, the first 10, 15 minutes of the movie is live action. And it seems like there's two sets of people. There's these people that are trying to help these people in prison escape prison, but they can't reach these people in prison. So the movie, the animated segment starts where there's two black prisoners that are about to escape. One of them is an old man. He's like, oh, I want to tell you a story about these guys that are coming to rescue us and the, the kind of guys they're like. So the movie, the animated movie, is this black guy telling this other black guy, they're both prisoners, a story. And that's what we get into. And then, as you said, it's got to do with these three animated black animal characters that lose their home and they decide to go to Harlem to get into the crime scene. They want to take over Harlem. They want to use their skills to just take over. And it's, it's a crime story. This whole movie is basically debauchery, crime, more of the stuff we've seen before in Ralph Bakshi. But to be honest with you, Heavy Traffic and Felix... Uh, sorry, Felix the Cat. Fritz the Cat <laughs> was more... Yeah, Felix. Felix, I know. I, you know, I bet there's a... I bet that's a... I don't think that was a coincidence that it, it was Fritz the Cat, Felix the Cat. Anyway, I digress. Fritz the Cat and Heavy Traffic more slice of life you're in these guys lives and you know as it goes on this movie is more purposeful in these characters wanting to take over and show how it's done with their crime skills and it's very heavy-handed and what i mean by that is i can see why the black community was upset because they were just perpetuating the gangster lifestyle the perpetual the prostitution lifestyle the corrupt cops i mean black she's doing a lot of metaphorical things that for the time, it's kind of cool, but it's so fucking heavy-handed. By today's standards, it's kind of like, you're not really, you're not even trying to be some subtle with this shit. There's a big ass, big titty, big bootied white woman wearing the American, her whole suit is like the American flag, and she's obviously meant to represent America. Yeah, America beating and tricking the black man exactly. in her little segments. Yeah, and it's just, it's so on the, it's not even on the nose, it's so overtly are black men that dumb that they're just gonna any white woman i know it's a stereotype black guys and white women but i guess back in the day if i was watching it i was in the same but yeah you tell him yeah that's right white women are just there to trick us but today i was just like i don't know man this is this is not very funny i can see what you're doing but it's too heavy-handed and so many all of the white characters most of them are just shysty the american girl i mean there's a whole godfather subplot in this movie which i found bizarre but apparently the reason why that was in there is because uh i think one of the producers of the godfather has something to do with the movie and they just inserted that element in there and i just thought whatever these characters these three characters that are just getting into gangs and overthrowing all these corrupt white and just taking over and by the end they win i just thought they were assholes really <laughs> i just thought these characters are assholes they are part of the problem. I know Ralph Bakshi's trying to do this, like, uh, I don't, not a subversion, like, he's just trying to use the negative aspects of the street, like he does in all these other movies, to show what's wrong. But these guys are meant to be the protagonists, they're meant to be heroes, and they're doing all the fucked up shit as well. So that's why I can see how people think this is racist, because even the good characters, which are the three gangster black animal characters all they're doing is tricking the white people and is it meant to be righteous i mean are they meant to be you know giving the white people what they deserve or whatever i don't know but i just thought like these guys are fucking assholes they're crooks they're criminals themselves it's meant to be cool black exploitation characters are meant to be anti-heroes but these guys they're just opportunists really cool looking opportunists i'm just talking about the main characters and the narrative I don't know how I was really meant to feel about the movie. Like, I feel like I was meant to feel like, yeah, you tell him, yeah. Someone's speaking about our culture, our community. And maybe it's because we're in 2017. But I just look back on this movie and I'm like, I don't know, man. I can see why the black community of the time 
will look at this movie and just feel like it's perpetuating all the negative things about black people and not showing anything else. Because honestly, that's all. The, the, the movie starts with the black people from the prison trying to break out. The animated characters are all gangsters and crooks and pimps and all that other stuff. So I don't know, man. It's it's um for a white director to be writing this black narrative and that I'm not offended, but I was just this doesn't work for me, personally. Personally, for me, first of all, um, for people who don't know, both Barry White and Scat Van Crothers were in this and they voice acted it. Like they're part in um they're in the live action parts as well as they voice some of the um animal characters in the animation. So I mean that's a little bit neat, but. Generally, like what you were saying, it's like if this is a social commentary, which allegedly these three films all are social commentaries, then on the scale of like intensity, like if you were to take like you were saying the black characters from Heavy Traffic, you know, and they're kind of offensive or everything, you crank that to like 11 or 12. That's this movie. That's That's the entirety of this movie is like on that extreme level. And if he's trying to comment on, like, that's how they were in the 70s and everything, I don't think you have to be as racist as he was. Like, for example, in um, Fritz the Cat, I think, like, one of the only characters I actually kind of cared about was the Black Crow Duke. Like, he he was obviously a racial stereotype and a pretty bad one at that. But I found him within, like, the whole cast of characters, understand, it's a low bar, but I found them, like, okay to watch. Mm. And, like, if it had been like that, or maybe, you know, maybe a little bit lower or something, I might have been like, okay, well, maybe there's something to this movie. There's there's nothing really to this movie. This movie's schlock. There is a narrative, especially compared to Heavy Traffic and Fritz the Cat, yeah. that I didn't have to go back to Wikipedia and be like, what on earth did I just watch? Just, no, I very yeah. clearly watched some guys lose their home and then take over the crime racket in Harlem. It was very straightforward with that. But it wasn't especially interesting. And I think some of the little quote-unquote commentary things, like with Miss America, most of them could have been cut out, and I think the film would have been better in the narrative structure. Like, it's just... I think Baxi kind of has ADD. You know what I mean? Like, he just takes a scattergun approach to everything, That at least with these three movies, when he's allowed to do whatever he wants and he wants to make it a social commentary he'd be like okay this is cool okay this this would be cool this doesn't really fit in there but i want to make that kind of example on our social commentary so i'm going to jam that in there and that's like he kind of jigsaw puzzles all these three films together when he's structuring it and it's a little bit hard to watch this one in terms of how lucid it is is uh easiest between the three of them but that sure. doesn't mean it's it's good i think he had the best voice acting as well between the three of them yeah which again kind of helps it make it more watchable to me like i said but this is not something i'm ever going to go back and watch mm-hmm. or i'm not going to ever recommend this to somebody unless they're trying to talk about stuff that was like really offensive that would be like maybe you should try checking out coonskit because that was probably one of the most offensive films i've ever watched in my entire life yeah, and the name. I know what he's doing. He's just trying to get attention, trying to be brash. That's what you want that's what you want to do when you're protesting and stuff like that. You know, the name doesn't even bother me. If it was called Nigger Skin and at the time, that's how they felt about it, because Coon was on par with that. Synonymous, yeah. yeah, so I understand that. They renamed the movie to Street Fight and other releases, but now, you know, they've went back to Coon Skin, whatever. Like I know people are still writing think pieces about this movie. I watch it now. And I'm just like, you know, I think of like the Boondocks and Black Jesus and Blackish. There's a lot of black cinema and television that are, and even dear white people, we just spoke about before, that addresses these things in a more serious way. And I know people respect Bakshi for using animation in a more serious way, but I've said it in every single review. Bakshi, for me, just takes it to 11. If he just was more subtle, and did, he doesn't need to go to 11. doesn't need to be overtly sexual, overtly violent. And all of these movies are like, insane. Look, let me let me be very specific with this movie as well. You will never forget some of these scenes in Baxi's movies. This movie has three or four scenes that are fucking unforgettable. There's one scene where an animated preacher is just going on a fucking ramble. And he's naked. He's a fat black man. And he's just going on a religious tirade as a preacher. And it just it just went on for ten fucking minutes. The movie even started in live action with a black preacher going off his fucking head. I think this was one of the guys that was trying to get the guys out of prison as well. Yeah, it was one of the uh, jailbreakers. And I was just like, 
what? I don't get it. I mean, what you're saying is a ramble. I don't get it. The, ad, the live action guy didn't get it. The cartoon guy didn't get it. There's just black guys going on these rambles. And I was just like, I'm getting a headache. <laughs> the second scene, the actually the most bizarre scene, and it was it was artistic, but it was actually disturbing, was one where this white guy was trying to have sex with this black prostitute. And they get he ends up in a room. Oh, uh, the cop? Yeah, the cop. And then they drug him and they put him in blackface and they kick him out on the street. And this is, I know it's a very big social commentary what they're doing about black people getting shot by the police. And then he goes out in the street and the police shoot him in a very grisly murder scene, which is very disgusting. But again, I know what Baxi's trying to do, he's trying to drive home the police violence, which again, in 2017, is still applicable. So again, that point still sticks to this day. But it was so excessive. It's like, Baxi is there for spectacle. And I know he's trying to make a point, but he overdoes it. And to this day, I just think it's overkill. You could just be a lot more subtle and it will age a lot more because you watch it now. If you go on YouTube and if you think oh, I'm being an arsehole, I went on YouTube to do a, a video, watch a video review of Coonskin to just before what we do it, let's see what other people think. People were sitting there watching these movies like this kind of joke test. Can you watch this movie without being offended? These two black guys would watch the movie and they were just shocked and laughing and offended. And there was like three or four other reviews of people just like, what the fuck did I watch? And he's so so offended. They, they're watching it for jokes. They're not watching it for the reason that he wants it to be watched for. And it's sad because I can see what he was trying to do. But I agree, it doesn't work, man. It's just too, too one-sided. It's just all the way to the right. It's the anti-Walt Disney. And it doesn't age well. It really doesn't. And I can understand why this movie was banned at the time. But now people look at this movie as a novelty. That's funny. And I'm not offended by it. I'm just like, this movie's kind of boring. And it's a, it's a ramble. These characters are assholes. The animation is not as good as the other two. It's got a whatever name, a name that doesn't work anymore. So apparently this is Baxi's best work. Maybe he's proud of it because it rattled up so many feathers and it's got so much notoriety. I really think it's forget. It's a kind of forgettable movie. Yeah, I was going to say, if you take out all the stuff that's offensive, this is forgettable. 100% yeah. forgettable. Yeah, even Heavy Traffic. It's it, Heavy Traffic is a fucking, it's an acid trip. That movie, I will never forget the movie because it is a fucking acid trip. And Fritz the Cat is just, it's just weird. It's weird and over the top and excessively overly sexual with animals. This movie, I just thought, meh. Honestly, don't watch this movie because it's a waste of time. Person, I know it's, that's what would be really harsh for me to say. Well, hold on. First of all, in my opinion, all three of these movies are a waste of time. Okay, I think this one, in terms of like, can I stomach it? Probably the least worst of the three. But sure. other than like when Barry White's boxing, which I actually thought was kind of a cool live action sequence, the way that they directed it and everything, I'm not going to remember this movie. I'm not. No, neither am I. Look, man, again, I think Maxi is a very good animator. Maybe not even in this movie, but it's storytelling is not good. It really isn't. I'm sorry. And, you know, third time's a charm, man. So I'm glad this trilogy of his, like, social commentary street movies is over because I'm actually looking forward to the next phase of his fantasy and other works, which I feel like I know for a fact I like a lot more than these other three. So... That's all I've got to say. I went on a lot of a, a bit of a tirade explaining myself, but have you got any final thoughts before we wrap this up? Um, one, I'm glad that we're past this because, <laughs> like, before I knew anything about Ralph Baxi, I thought it was all going to be, like, okay. Like, you mentioned, oh, he did, like, Cool World and stuff. I was like, I've never seen it, but it looks okay. I mean, it looks like a movie I could watch. And then this is what I started out with. And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I feel like so worn down after watching the first two movies and this one not as bad as the other ones to me but it's still like i think for a lot of people it's just forget it fuck it fuck all three of these movies don't bother watching them yeah. my bad the only thing i did like in the movie was the music the music was good even the opening with the oh yeah i did like the opening song actually yeah. the black guy just singing in front of the camera i thought it was cool it was you know a, a movie of the time and the soundtrack throughout the movie, but actually he's got great soundtracks because he's got a really good, mostly seems like a black cast of soundtrack with, really, with a lot of good black artists. So good music. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I shouldn't I shouldn't take that away from the movie. But guys, if you um completely disagree, and again, I, I got an email, be said, oh, fuck, you, you understand, Bakshi. Maybe if you were high, 
No, man. I no. Said, wait, wait, I did that test. That, that does not help you. <laughs> Shut yeah. the fuck up. I don't know what you're talking about. This movie is not even psychedelic. To I don't think this works high at all. No, it wouldn't. Not unless you're really into black exploitation movies, like I said. So you know, actually, before we wrap this up, I did a uh, guys. If you're listening, if you follow the uh, releases that I do every once in a while, or you follow them religiously, you already know that I did a documentary of the month on the on the black exploitation documentary. That was awesome. Now, if I was looking at this movie as a black exploitation movie, this movie might have worked if they cut out all the live action stuff. If it was about the three animals and it was a bit of a clearer narrative and it was just about them wanting to take over Harlem, maybe it would have worked. The live action stuff distracted me a lot. Yeah, I think that might have helped the movie, but I still wouldn't have liked it. Honestly, the characters are just dickheads. By the end of the movie, they're all sitting in the car laughing how they won. And I was like, what? And then you got back to the live action segment. I don't even remember what happened. Did they did they rescue them? Uh, yeah, they they did manage to rescue him. Barry White got shot though. Yeah, exactly. And then the end. That's all, folks. <laughs> That's it. you know. So, guys, if you was if you did manage to watch Coonskin and you have a different perspective or different opinion, I'm very open to hear it. Even if you hated every word that came out of my mouth, I don't really care because I just want to hear your opposing opinion. I want to hear what they have to say about the basketball player. Then that's oh. like super. Oh my god, that's like a scale of one to ten. That was like the twelve on the racist scale. Oh my god, I forgot. There's so many things. You know, I had a list of scenes that I was actually meant to bring up. I just brought up the guy, the the, the cop getting shot to death scene because that one really stuck out to me. But hey, look, I'm sure you can go on YouTube and you could just find the clips selectively. But again, and to wrap this up before I prattle on anymore, this movie does again feel like all these little clips, all these little shorts, fifteen minutes of this, fifteen minutes of that. There's even parts they go to like the war or something. It's just war, Godfather, club prostitution. It's but Bashi's execution is something to be desired. But Ralph Bashi fanboys, come at me. Leave those comments in the comment section down below. Smash that dislike button if you don't agree with me. But if you did appreciate an honest discussion on Bashi, and to be honest with you, this movie is his most critical one. Go on IMDb Rotten Tomatoes. You can see the scores. I'll put it on the screen if you're on YouTube. Yeah, so... This one does not age well, even for the diehards. I could be wrong, but let me wrap this up by saying, Catface, I appreciate you joining me on this one, and I'm really looking forward to getting over this hill into this next phase of Bakshi's filmography with you. Definitely outside of any technical difficulties we've ever had, this has been the hardest trilogy of anything you've ever asked me to do. It's hard for both of us. Yeah, I'm glad that the war is over. We found peace. We can go forward with some more tame things. Because, like, I don't care if he's trying to do social commentary or whatever. If your stuff's not interesting or it's hard to watch, then who are you talking to? You know what, man? You saying that I'm going to do a little spoiler. Just a little one that's going to piss some people off even more. There was a point that I gave you all the Batchy's movies but before since retrospective. And it sounds like you watched his most recent movie first... And then oh, you said God, to me, yeah. what the fuck was that? And I was like, he made that movie in 2010. I know. When you told me that, I was like, uh, the master of animation, that the whole reason why we're going to watch all this stuff, you know, this is something he put out very recently. And it looks like something, it looks like it should have been his first work. It was very clunky and just fucking weird. Like, I don't even understand what he's trying to talk about. I was, the only reason I brought it up is just because, you know, people change and everything change and then... I hear a lot of comments how this was a return to form, but not in the best way. But I'm a, I'm a tease into that a little bit because you had a very sparky reaction to it. But guys, stay tuned because that'll be the last thing we talk about in this retrospective, which again, by the end of this year, will be done. He let the door hit him on the way out. That's all uh, I have to say. It was a kickstarted project. So the fans paid for Ew, it. Oh, gross. <laughs> You know what? I shouldn't edit on I that. I guess he gave them he gave them what they wanted because like this is the kind of stuff that they're defending, right? And that's all he put out in that movie. Well, let's see. Well, let's see. When I watch it, you know, my opinion matters the most. You, you, you know, you're the asshole. I've been very positive about this <laughs> filmography so far. You've been the one that's been very negative. That's how I see it. That's true, <laughs> but I'm usually more negative, anyways. 
Uh, that's, you know, obviously that's not true, listeners, you know. But anyway, guys, let's get it out of here. If you're a fan of what we've been discussing or not a fan, you know what? Forget about all that. We're celebrating International Animation Day. We've been doing it. We're going to be doing it outside of October anyway. But there's a playlist I'll put in the top right hand corner if you listen on YouTube. If you listen on the podcast, I'll put a link in the description. I already said thank you, but I'm going to say it again, Catface. Thank you for joining me on this one, as always. Hey, you know what? I mean, thanks for uh, doing this for, like, what, seven or eight years now? It's been fun. Not this particularly, but the rest of the run's been pretty much fun. It is fun to me, especially when we listen to this in our old age and we go back to this. And you never know. You know what? Funny shit of all, 20 years from now, we might revisit these movies and love them. Who knows? Unlikely, but who knows? But, guys, enough of that. Subscribe to the channel if you like our content. And we'll leave it at that, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next recording. See you guys around.